Hi everyone. So I've recently um, colored my hair and I really like it. I like the way it came out and I thought I would, I was feeling kind of inspired to do a pink springy butterfly look. So I'm going to be doing that um, and I'll curl my hair at the end and I used overtone to color my hair, um, which is like a conditioning, um, if you, you probably know what it is. Uh, it's a conditioning color. I used overtone color conditioner to do my hair. It's uh, in the color rose gold. And I really... I really like the overtone products. Um, my hair feels like really healthy and soft. What is on my shirt? Oh, I have a toddler, so he thinks I'm a napkin. He just like wipes his mouth on me. Um, it's lovely. Okay, well, try not to look at that. So, um, yeah, I really like overtone. I think it does a good job of coloring the hair, and it's like, I mean, I personally like that it kind of comes out a little more muted. Um, of course, I did it a few days ago and it was much um, more vibrant when I first did it, but not like super vibrant, which I like. I like that it's muted. It kind of looks like lived in color, um, if that's a thing. So. start with some uh, moisturizer. This is my Revlon, or no, this is L'Oreal Revitalift. And I actually am going to use a little of this because this is my Tula So I got a little bit of a sunburn the other day. I don't know if you can tell. But I don't know if you're supposed to use this Tula stuff, but it, since it's cooling, it has been amazing on face sunburn. Um, now, I'm, I'm stupid for getting sunburn because, especially someone as fair as me, I should not assume that just because it's March, uh, and it's a little bit overcast that I won't get sunburned. We went out to the beach over the weekend. Um, we went to, I don't know if, if you're from New York, you might know what this is. It's called Rye Playland. It's like this really cool beach thing from like, it looks like it was built in the 1940s, which probably is when it was built. Um, and it has an amusement park there, and um, it has, I don't know, other stuff with the boardwalk. It's very, very cool. There's a pool there. But in the off-season, the beach is like allows dogs. I'm going to be using some of this Kismet Pure Vitamin C Primer I just got as like an add-on gift from Ipsy. I don't usually do moisturizer and primer, but... I got it, so I'll use it. This is one of those, like, gel to powder, which I like. Anyway, so yes, we, we went to Rye Playland with our dog and my sister-in-law's dog. And they had a very, very good time. Except what I realized is my dog, who is a, um, she's a corgi mix. She's adorable. Um, she ha is very protective of my son and also the, my sister-in-law's dog who's still like one she's like very little puppy and we realized that my dog Aggie was like so protective of Joe and Libby the other dog that um, 
we actually had to keep her on a leash because if like other dogs came over to her she was like aggressive like if other dogs came near us like little dogs she didn't care about but if like big dogs came over she would like snarl and bark I don't know how to fix that if anybody if anybody has any ideas of how to get your dog not to do that please let me know she seems very anxious and like she didn't used to and she used to love the dog park and it's like all of a sudden she is like really terrified I can just use my fingers actually But we still had a nice day. But the thing that's sort of dumb is that I didn't wear sunscreen. I didn't put any makeup on, which like all of my, you know, moisturizers, foundations, all those things usually have SPF in them, which is an amazing thing. But like the funny thing is on weekends, I like don't get the time to do that, <laughs> to put makeup on. It's like during the weekdays is when I glam up because I have time um, so on the weekends I'm like just usually like lucky if I can brush my teeth and put my contacts in and like put a bra on before like you know I'm chasing my son around so uh, you know that's how it goes so if you live in New York, um, whether you live in the city or anywhere near Westchester, I do recommend Rye Playland. We haven't yet been in like the on season, but the amusement park looks really fun and like good for good for young children. And um and, and any children, I guess. Any people. But it's really fun to go when it's like a dog park. Because if, like, you don't have a crazy dog, it's fun. And my son, like, the water's warm. It's like Long Island Sound, I guess. And the water's really warm because there's a jetty and it kind of, like, protects the water. And so it's, like, really calm water and it's, like, really warm, even in March. My son loves to walk in there and the dogs love to walk in there and I usually leave that beach with um, my dogs, dog or dogs, being a sandy mess and getting sand all over the car. So it's really fun. Alright, I'm going to use this Mayo Lush palette because I'm going for a very pinky look. And I really love this blush palette. I know it doesn't come through in the video as well as it does IRL, but it's so beautiful. And it just has like all these complexities of colors kind of like really nicely blended. Also, I got a new highlighter as part of an Ipsy bundle. This is by Lovecraft Beauty. And so pretty. So, I really like it because it feels like velvet. And it's like... It's not super intense. But it's more intense than the Halsey one, so I can use it with this fan brush, which I love. I love a fan brush. I know, like, doing all this highlighting of the face is, like, kind of out now. I'm not, like, up on the TikTok makeup trends. But I just like the way this looks, so I'm doing it. Okay, next up I'm going to do some brows. This is a product I haven't used in a while. It's by Elizabeth Mott. It's called Queen of the Fill. It's 
actually pretty nice. So anyway, the other thing I was going to say is I have two new recommendations that I wanted to talk about. Um, one a TV recommendation and one a book recommendation. And neither will come as a surprise because I think I've talked about both of these before. I wanted to share them with you because I, I really have liked them a lot. Ugh. Oh. Maybe this is not, maybe this brow stuff is too old. It's like crumbling and leaving like residue on my face. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, well, that's fine. Anyway, um, I'm going to be using this palette today, which my son picked out for me at Christmas time. And I haven't actually really gotten into it that much, but I discovered some of these colors the other day and I thought they were really pretty. So I'm going to be using them for the look. I'm going to start with this one. So anyway, the first recommendation is for a TV show, and I know I've talked about it before, but it's Dairy Girls. Um, and I'm, if you haven't watched it, I like recommend it. I feel like anyone would like this show, but you would especially like it if you are a child of the 90s, um, if you went to an all-girls school, like high school, if you love accents, um, if you love Nicola Coughlin, which, like, who doesn't? Um, I, I don't know, there's, like, my husband is not even on any of those lists, and he still loved it. So I fully recommend the show. Um, it's about these four girls and one boy, one lad. And they live in the 90s in, um, Derry, London Derry. And, and when that's in Ireland, and it's like when all the strife was going on between the Protestants and Catholics, and that's like happening as like a backdrop to the whole show. And it's there, and it's like kind of, um, it's like disturbing, like how, how much it's there. But it's like, they know it's there and they acknowledge it, but they're still like regular girls going to school and like being high schoolers, being teenagers, being like wanting to drink and do crazy things. And so it's just, just like such a universal show because it shows like, I'm doing this color now, it shows like how similar we all are and... Um, I don't know, it's such a funny show, but it just, it also has this, like, way of gently tugging at your heartstrings the whole time, because you love, you grow to love these families, and, I mean, even, like, the ridiculousness, you, like, start to sort of understand some of the ridiculousness, and understand where they're coming from, and it's just such, like, a brilliantly <sighs> structured show, I think. And my favorite episode, if you've watched it, or if you haven't, there's this one episode where the main character, who is just this, like, adorable girl, played by Saoirse Jackson, I think her name is, um, her name is Erin on the show, and her family's dog dies, and she's, like, really torn up about it, but they also have, like, the GSCE exams, like, that day. So they've been like cramming for it and on the way to school she and her friends see this dog and she thinks it looks like her dead dog so she goes running after it and it takes them it leads them into this church and the girls are all like hopped up on like caffeine because they've been like cramming 
And so they're like all a little nuts and they see this statue of Mary and they think that the statue of Mary is smirking at them. And then Aaron goes upstairs to the choir loft where the dog has gone and the dog starts peeing. And the tears drip down, or the tears, the pee drips down into Mary's face and it looks like tears. <laughs> like all kinds of hilarity ensues, like they think there's been a miracle when um, they use it to try to like get out of their exams. And it, there's like this priest that comes in that's like kind of a hot priest and he like tries to like befriend them and stuff it, but also like the other character I love is their principal who's this nun who like clearly has no time for anything like even the priest is like oh the lord you know he works in mysterious ways and she's like rolling her eyes at him it's just I'm not making it sound funny but it really really is where is that You know what, actually, maybe I will go back in with this blush palette and pick a pretty color from in there to use as a highlight. Oh, yes, good idea. I'm so smart. So that's, that's the show, Dairy Girls. I fully recommend it. I think you should check it out. All right, then I'm going to take um, some of this About Face Fluid Eye Paint in White Noise. I'm going to take a flat brush. I'm going to start kind of... So the other recommendation I have for you is an audiobook by Riley Sager, who I talked about in my last video. I'm like flying through Riley Sager books. I can't get enough. Now, one time I was an aspiring writer. Um, I still sort of am, I guess. I've written two novels, can't get an agent for them, uh, but like I'm fascinated by the Riley Sager books, both because they're fun stories, but also because I'm really interested in how he structures his novels and how he writes, and I am like jealous, you know, like it's that jealousy I felt after reading Gone Girl. I was like, I definitely feel like I could have written that. I mean, I didn't and I couldn't, but it was like one of those books that made me feel jealous that I hadn't written it, if that makes sense. And that's kind of how I feel about these Riley Saker books. It's like what I would write if I like was a better writer. <laughs> I don't know. It's like a hard thing to explain. Um... So I'm just, I don't want a harsh line here. I'm just sort of trying to buff out, but I want it to be kind of an intense. There we go. Um, so anyway, I'm actually already on to reading The Final Girls, which is the first book that put him on the map, kind of. And it's good so far. But I'm not very far in, but I'll talk about that one in another episode. <laughs> episode. Um, but I read, it's called uh, Home Before Dark. I think I'm going to use this color right here. Uh, on here. And anyway, it's, it's a really, really 
really interestingly structured book. So if you, like me, are interested in writing and, um, or if you just really like mystery novels or if you like kind of like thrillers, I think you would really like this book. I mean, it's kind of hard not to get engrossed in it, I think. So it's going to be kind of hard to tell you what it's about, but like all of his books, it's about a woman who has a tough past, who's like a survivor. Ooh, that's really pretty. Um, so the book is about this woman who, at the time of telling the story, is an adult, and she has had this really kind of weird life because her, when they, when she was six, her parents bought this house that had, had like a tragedy. Um, there was a father who had lived there who killed his daughter and himself and like nobody wanted the house so they like got it cheaply and it was this big beautiful house. And her father was also an aspiring writer and he kind of saw it as like a cool house to live in as a writer. Um, cause it like had a history and stuff and he thought maybe he could kind of I guess exploit that. <laughs> That's sort of a harsh word to use, but um, yeah. Oh my god, I love that. Um, I'm gonna use a darker maroonish color to do the under eye. So anyway, when she was six she lived in this house and they only lived there for like 20 odd days and they left very suddenly and she doesn't have any recollection of what happened or why they left because she was only six um, but then her father wrote a book about the house called House of Horrors and it became this like worldwide phenomenon bestseller so now she's lived her whole life kind of in the shadow of this book and she's like resentful of that because A, she doesn't remember anything, and B, like, she can't go anywhere or meet anyone that, like, doesn't know this about her. And so she's, like, her whole life has been defined by it. Um, and she believes that the book is, like, BS, and she's, like, not believe not having it, and anyway, she's grown up into, like, a regular person. She, like, is a house flipper, um... And she's really interested in houses and designs and stuff like that. Her father actually dies. He, he dies of cancer. And he leaves her everything. Because she's his only child. And that, she discovers, includes the house that they left after 20 days. And so she's kind of surprised. Because she didn't realize that he kept the house. And she has no idea why. Um... And now she's the owner of it, and her father had told her that that house wasn't safe for her and never go there. And her mom, who's still living, is like, I don't care if he gave you that house, like, I'll buy it from you, like, I don't want you going there. But she's a house flipper, and she's, like, kind of interested in this old house, and so she decides to go. And it's in Vermont. It's like it's like beautiful, and there's like beautiful woods. It's in this cute little town, and the town is a, like a little bit resentful of her and the book because it like made their town become like full of tourists, as they call them, ghouls. Um, so she has kind of a tough time with that. Oh, that's making my eyes water. I hope that doesn't really make my eyes water too much. Um, so really the book then is, it's about her doing that and discovering some weird things. Um, but also, also, what I think is kind of clever about how the book is structured is the chapters alternate between her as an adult and a chapter of the book that her father wrote. And I don't know if it's because I listened to the audiobook um, instead of reading it, but they had a man read the the book, you know, the House of Horror par parts, 
and something about his like earnest voice or whatever it really drew me in and I f it made me forget that I was reading what was supposed to be his book and not like his actual factual account so it kind of like keeps kind of blurring the lines between what actually happened and what might not have happened and what did happen and what might have happened like and so you kind of like really get into her head as an adult where like you're not at all sure and it it was kind of a fun ride in that way then because you don't know what's actually real and what's not. Um, I'm going to use this uh, LA Colors liquid eyeliner just because I want something like really dark but not, not gloopy. Maybe I'm not going to use this. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's alright. Um, so yeah, so it so she meets like the neighbor who she knew when briefly when she was six um, and the neighbor has since like lost her memory because she has like Alzheimer's so she's like not helpful but in terms of like remembering what happened but it turns out her daughter went missing around the time when they left the house and you just really get drawn in. I mean, it just was so good. And from, again, from a aspiring writer and an appreciator of a good storyteller, I just think Riley Sager really has a way of telling a really interesting story that makes you want to stay up until 2 a.m. to finish it, which is what I did again. Oh, shoot. You know what? I'm going to just touch this up with a little more highlighter. So I'm going to do another video shortly. I bought a bunch of products on Amazon that were like the cheapest makeup products I could find. And some of them, <clears throat> not all of them, but some of them are very, very highly rated. So I am kind of excited to do that video. So I'm going to do a video of cheap Amazon products. Um, and then like the any, everything was under five dollars and then I'm gonna do another video as soon as everything arrives of the cheapest makeup I could find on wish <laughs> um, and see how that goes so these um, are little butterflies I don't know if you can see oh. <laughs> um, and I've discovered that they're not easy to work with at all but what I'm going to do is just throw some butterflies on, because why not? So I'm going to open this up, and I'm going, I'm going to try to do this like very gracefully, which is hilarious, because I tried doing this before and it's not graceful. Part of the problem is, is that these tweezers have like gunk on them and that makes the butterfly want to stick to the tweezers. Now the p other hard thing is that I don't want, I want them to kind of look like they don't have a lot of rhyme or reason in how I put them on, but I feel like that's going to be hard to accomplish. I feel like key to that is like swapping the direction they're flying in. Oh, 
I just got gunk on my. Mm -mm. I just got gunk from the tweezers on my face. No. No tweezers. Maybe I should put a butterfly right over that. better um yeah so anyway if you have books or shows that you would like to recommend to me i would love recommendations oh i just got glue in my hair Like all of us, we're in this quarantine time and it like, it's so nice to have an outlet, um, a creative outlet. Oh, but I got my first vaccine. I'm kind of really thrilled about that. That's a good system. I should just put this somewhere on my finger. I'm not going to do it down the face on both sides. Maybe I need one more. I'm going a little crazy here. Ow. Nope, that butterfly is not going to stick. But this is really harder than it looks. so small. I wish they were like a little bigger. Because what I wanted to do initially was do a look where I put these on and then I put makeup over them and then I peel it off. Oh, that's too much glue. Um, but they're too small for that to work. Again, this, I bought these butterflies when I was looking for things on Amazon that were really cheap, and they are really cheap. So, there's that. So, now maybe I should be trying to be symmetrical, but I kind of don't want to do that. I just want to not have to worry about being symmetrical. really pretty. It's just a lot of <laughs> work to get them. And they're like flying all over the place. And of course because I have gunk on my tweezers.
do one more. Do one right there. Okay. It's very pretty. In certain lights, it looks like I have an infection, but. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to be using um, this Lancome Eyelash Booster. I know it's Lancome. 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 I watched that there's a video of this girl that can pronounce all of the French uh, makeup lines and fashion lines. And I know it's not Lancome, it's Lancome. But I'm not French. I'm not going to pretend to be French. I love France. I would love to speak French. I tried to actually learn it because um, there were a couple years before the adoption when we went to France a bunch of times. It makes us sound like we're rich. We're really not. In fact, we put ourselves into massive amounts of debt <laughs> doing that, but it was kind of like our way of trying to live, live an exciting life while we were waiting for the adoption, uh, which is what we were told to do, and I don't regret it, but we went to France a lot, and I, I used to do Duolingo to try to learn French a little bit, um, but I just, I wish I had learned it when I was younger, because it's just really hard, and also like, if you're not regularly practicing it, then, you know, it doesn't stay in your mind. This is a good mascara. Oh, it's Marc Jacobs. <laughs> but I think that lash booster is helping. I was going to do false lashes, but maybe I don't need to. This is, like, pretty spectacular. Trying to work on a prettier mascara face, not like, oh no, I just got, <laughs> I just got some on me when I was trying to be dumb. I'm half tempted to put just a butterfly over that. How noticeable is it? Not that. So, lashes, so I took a pair of lashes that I have, not expensive ones, and I literally just cut them in half, and that gave me, you know, they were, once were one whole lash, like this, and now they're two lashes, and I've discovered that if I only use half a lash, it really doesn't matter if I'm using what kind of glue I'm using, if they're magnet lashes. It really, really doesn't because you know what? Half a set of lashes is pretty easy to apply. What doesn't work on me and what I have trouble with is a full set. So I'm putting just some cheap Sephora glue, same stuff I use to apply the butterflies, and I'm just going to let those dry while I put on my lipstick, because they need to dry a little bit to get tacky. So for lipstick, I'm going to be using this color by Real Her in the color Lady Love Matte Liquid Lipstick, and I just picked it because it's pink, <laughs> and I wanted like a long wear. And I like this one because it's kind of creamy and not super drying. Although I have to say, wearing a mask, I'm surprised there hasn't been more of like a run on 
long wear dry matte lipsticks because honestly that's kind of the way to go I mean I've been wearing more lip gloss and like it's like all inside of my mask and it like rubs all over how do people do that I mean I don't go a lot of places but I still pick up my son from daycare every day and I have to wear a mask and the inside of the mask looks like a Civil War bandage because it's like covered in lipstick and lip gloss so I gotta go back to those long wear I'm seeing some stuff that I don't like I'm just gonna fill in this eyeliner a little bit because it's looking a little gappy oh That's better. So this also was part of an Ipsy bundle add-on. Ipsy was just like having this flash sale where like they were selling all these little bundles of stuff they probably had left over um, for five bucks. And so I got this and that highlighter together for five dollars. And then I got that primer and something else. I forget what for five dollars okay so this is the lip gloss again why am I putting lip gloss on I actually am going out today this is a day where my son is in school and my husband is home on spring break and so we thought we would like go out to lunch since it's supposed to be warm today, although it looks pretty cloudy. And we could sit outside. This is a cool... I really like this lip gloss, wow. Alright, so now we're tacky. And see, if I just wear a half a set, it like pops right on. So the trick is half a set and letting your glue dry if you're using glue. should have a prettier um, applying eyelashes face. Alright, so that is the makeup look. And now I am going to very, very briskly do my hair. If this part doesn't interest you, you can click off. I will talk about one more TV show that I've been watching. Um, or maybe two. So, I've watched more of that show Discovery of Witches, and it's not at all like what I thought it was going to be, <laughs> based on the first three episodes. So, um, it, it's really good. I mean, I like it, but it's definitely like, like I didn't realize there was time travel in it. <laughs> So I guess if you're a fan of Outlander and things like that and like period pieces, that's even more reason to give it a shot. Again, it's it's very good and like Matthew Good is very sexy. Um, but there is a lot going on with him that I didn't realize in the first three episodes. I mean, he's very old, and he's been around a long time, and he turns out that he was maybe one of the people, like, that was um, persecuting witches, and so it's gotten a lot more complicated, but I'm still enjoying it, 
And the other show that I have been watching is this season of American Idol. <laughs> I used to like American Idol and then I kind of got like meh. Partially because my husband just like, <laughs> my husband was like a punker in high school. So watching a show like that is like kind of against everything he used to believe in. But I think he did kind of enjoy watching it when we did watch it together. Um, but it just, it was like too much of a time commitment. I mean, two nights in a row to make him sit through just was like too much. And so I'm sort of just watching it on Hulu on my own. Um, I started actually watching it because my husband actually used to teach Claudia Conway You know, she was like the lead in the play at the school he worked in, it works in, and, he, you know, he was like, she's a really good singer, you know, that's Kellyanne Conway's daughter, and she was on, um, and so I, I kind of wanted to see her, um, but I got really sucked in. There's like a lot of really, really good people. Um, there's this one guy who was like homeless for years and he like just did that so that he could like be a busker and like get really good at performing. So it wasn't like a sob story. It was like, I did this so that I could learn how to be a good performer. And like, he really is, he's great. Um, I'm also really excited because like some of the best people in the contest so far are like, overweight, or I shouldn't say overweight because I hate the term overweight, but they're like fellow fats. And that just makes me really happy because part of the reason I never like really went out for things like that was because of my weight and I just always assumed that like I would always just get told no. And like the bottom line is I, I would have gotten told no. In fact, I did get told no. <laughs> um, I had a, a, there was a guy I knew once that heard me sing and then asked me to record some of his uh, songs that he had written so that he could take them to Nashville. And I did, and he did, and the record rep was like, well, I don't really like the song, but that girl is a star. What does she look like? And then he was like, <laughs> That guy came back and was like, can you lose weight? And I was like, sure. <laughs> so I, he w and I remember the guy saying to me, like, if this was me, I would just lay in a box for a month and, like, feed myself with a straw. And I was like, oh, okay, I guess I try to do that. And I joined a gym, and I dieted really hard, and... I went to the gym every day and did all, I had lipstick on my teeth. Did all kinds of crazy things and um, I worked really hard and I, I did lose some weight. Um, I just I have trouble keeping weight off and like usually what happens with me is I like plateau at a certain point and then I just kind of like lose momentum. Um, but and. Like, granted, I, I also wasn't as fat then as I am now. I was, like, probably a size 12 or 16. Um, and I was working really hard. And then what happened was the guy that had, like, take, taken, that whose songs I had sung, he, like, kind of ghosted me. And I think it was because he was sort of resentful of the fact that, like, he took his demo down there and the guy liked me and not him. Um, and so all that was for nothing. And, honestly, I have no regrets. I think life worked out the way that it did for a reason. Um, I do miss singing. Sometimes I am sad that, like, singing isn't more part of my life. I do direct a children's choir, um, but of course, during the pandemic, that hasn't been happening.
pictures. So I really do miss singing. <laughs> like literally the extent of my singing is like, I made this playlist on Spotify of like soft, pretty covers of famous songs that I play when my son is like going to sleep and I sit there and like sing them to him. <laughs> but you know, I'm 40 now. Who's, who like really cares about a 40 year old singer? Um, and you know, the only regret I have is that I'm growing up, that I grew up in the 80s and 90s and not now because I just feel like there's so much more openness and like role models and people like Lizzo and who just you know it's not that they are fat that it's like the thing about them it's the fact that like they can be famous and not have that be the thing about them which I it like makes me emotional when I watch Lizzo perform and you know So that's my, why does my mouth look weird? That's a pretty look. So that's the look. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I hope that you enjoyed me talking at you about TV and movies, and, or TV and books. Um, if there's other things you'd like to see me do, or other shows you want me to think I should watch, or want me to talk about, or anything like that, please reach out. We live in such a lonely time right now, so any contact is good contact. Unless you're going to troll me, don't troll me. I'm sensitive. <laughs> I'm not as sensitive as I used to be. I'm pretty comfortable in who I am, but, you know, a good troll can ruin your day. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Bye!